So in a graph, a directed graph like this, there can be some negative weights. For example, the cost of going from vertex A to vertex B is minus 4. The cost of, cost of going from vertex D to vertex C is minus 3 and so on. Usually, when we have negative weights in a graph, directed graph like this, this is not a problem to find a shortest path. In other words, the finding the problem of shortest path, let's say, or the shortest path weight del u to v, still remains a valid problem even when we go through the weight which is negative. For example, the cost of going from this node s via a, b to z would be 3 minus 4 will be minus 1 plus 4 will be 3. So the total path cost of this path from s to z, this path s to z will be total 3 minus 4 plus 4 will be equals to 3. Now there are some shortest path algorithms, for example the Dijkstra's algorithm that assumes that all the weights are positive. But that's a limitation of an algorithm. Even if some weights are negative, the problem of finding the shortest path still remains a valid problem. Now, however, a graph can have something known as a negative weight cycle. So a negative weight cycle is a, a cycle in a graph such that the sum of the path cost is negative. Say, for example, we are interested in going from S to Z via C and D. So then here, the cost of this cycle is I could go from um, C to D and the cost would be 6. But if I come back, my cost will go down, right? So originally my cost was 5 and then my cost was 5 plus 6, 11. But then if I go back to C, my cost will decrease to 8. But then in order to go to my destination node, I have to again add 6 to this. So 8 plus 6 becomes 14. So earlier I could reach to the vertex D at a cost of 11, but now the cost of getting to D is 14. So I would definitely not go that go this route. So then I will keep going further with my cost of 11 plus 8 gives me 19. And with the cost of 19, I can go from node S to node G. Now say for example I wanted to go to the same node Z via E and F, right? So my cost of going from S to E will be 2 and say I go from E to F via this is and this will be 2 plus 3, 5. And then I have either I can choose to go to node G um, or I can choose to go back to node E. So, so, so far my cost is 5. Say I go choose to go back to E. My cost now becomes 5 minus 6 minus 1. So my cost of getting to node E so far is minus 1. Say I go back to F, then my cost increases to minus 1 plus 3 becomes 2. Now instead of going to Z, I again go back to E. So my now my cost becomes 2 minus 6, that equals minus 4. So then I go to F, my cost becomes minus 1. So, so far, my cost of reaching F is minus 1. At the beginning, my cost was 5. In the next round, my cost became minus 1. So in this way, I can keep looping through this cycle until my weight becomes something very, very tiny. Such a portion of the graph or such an arrangement or part of the graph where the overall weight of the entire cycle is negative. A good example is this one. So here we have a cycle. We have a cycle in this graph where the sum of the weights of the cycle is 2, plus 3, 5, minus 8, minus 3. So in other words, if I have the cycle in a path from my starting node S and my destination node is somewhere else, then I can continue to loop through this cycle such that my, my total overall minimum weight keeps decreasing. Such a portion of the graph known as the negative weight cycle definitely does not allow us to compute the shortest path. So if there is a negative weight cycle on some path from S to my destination node G, then we say that the minimum path cost from my starting node S to let's say some destination node G is minus infinite because I can always get to minus infinite by keep looping, right? So for that reason, negative weight cycle is a problem 
we cannot compute the shortest path between two nodes if there is a negative weight cycle reachable from the starting node. Now, there could be negative weight cycles in a graph, but if the negative weight cycle is not reachable from S, then that is not a problem. 